Hey Saints, welcome back. I'm Milo Toole. And I'm Jacob Renfro. And this is SFHS Today. In national news, the Senate reached a deal on Thursday to extend the debt ceiling into December, according to The Hill. The agreement, which was brokered by Mitch McConnell, still has its detractors in the GOP. Congress has until October 18th to raise the debt ceiling and avert a historic default, wrote The Hill's Jordan Carney. The House has to pass the Senate agreement before it is sent to President Biden. In school news, National Honor Society has been very active lately with its blood drive and honor society induction, which both happened last Wednesday. We spoke to the NHS advisor Sharon Bergman and Vice President Madison Mensing about Wednesday's ceremony and the blood drive to get an inside look at the importance and impact of the National Honor Society's involvement in the yearly event. What's your role in um, the induction ceremony? Um, tomorrow night, me and the other four leaders will be talking about NHS as the new members get inducted. What are the requirements for NHS? Um, you have to have a GPA of 3.7 or higher. There's also a teacher recommendation that goes along with NHS, and the kids will talk about their favorite teacher who has helped them the most through high school as they go across the stage. Can you tell me a little bit about NHS and what you do as an advisor and what the students are being honored for tomorrow night? Sure, so NHS obviously is something with a scholastic honor, but we also really try to be part of our community and do a lot of volunteering. And we require a certain amount of hours, 20 hours at minimum, for our kids to be a part of the community. Um, there are four pillars of NHS, character. So we really want kids to have integrity and be leaders, which leadership is another pillar, scholastic, and then our service, which I talked about. So tomorrow night we're inducting 42 new students into our program. And um, we're hoping to just show the community who we are, give to the community, show our leadership um, through our scholastics, but also who we are as characters too. The NHS blood drive has traditionally been one of the most impactful drives in this area, conducting blood donations that serve Anoka County for the entire year. In more health news, ISD 15 has a COVID dashboard on its website that tracks district-wide cases. As of October 7th, there were 11 new positive cases for St. Francis students and one new positive number in staff reporting. As students and staff look for COVID testing options, the district released information that St. Francis area students and staff members have free testing options through the district. According to a recent communication, the health office in each school building has take-home testing kits designed for student use. Gather Well is the company that has been providing this option. We spoke to the SFHS health office for more information. Who can uh, get the COVID tests? So the COVID tests are for students that are experiencing symptoms. And uh, how long do the tests take? They are done at home and they take about 15 minutes for results to come through. Uh, is there a limit to how many one student can have? It's one test per student and that might change. So right now it's just one per student. And there's two tests per box. So. How long do you have to stay out of school if you get a positive result? If you get positive results, it's recommended that you, it's strongly recommended that you isolate for 10 days and that start, starts based on when your symptoms start. Thanks for that update. In more school news, band and choir have started their fall concert season. After missing out on live performances for the spring of 2020 and most of last year, band held its first concert last Monday, October 4th, which brings us to this week's five minutes of band. Soloist Gavin McAllister had a saxophone feature in one of the numbers at this concert. Student celebrities everywhere, this is why you should care about five minutes of fame. How long have you been in band? Uh, I've been in band since sixth grade, so four years at this point. And what instrument do you play? I play the alto saxophone. How and why did you choose Gavin for the solo? Uh, well, the solo in, in that song was written into the alto saxophone part, so that sort of narrowed it down quite a bit there already. And, uh, and then when asked who wanted to take it, Gavin volunteered. During the during one of our earlier practices, we 
Mr. Bouchard had us uh, had us perform the solo, and I I was the one that uh, that, that decided to keep uh, keep practicing with the solo as well as uh, play it during the concert. He uh, he, he also influenced our choice a little bit by by giving us suggestions on what on what we can do. But there was no point in which uh, he chose a student that did not want to do the solo. And what is Gavin doing to set himself apart from the rest of the class to get this solo? Well, uh, you know, all everyone in the in that band in particular, in the concert band, is uh, working hard. And so Gavin uh, is just demonstrating some leadership uh, that all of them are then following his lead. And they're all doing a lot to just improve and get better. So while today it was Gavin with the solo, who knows who it'll be next time. <laughs> I know the band students are really happy to have gotten live concerts back in their schedules this year. In addition, choir will perform tonight at 7 p.m. in the PAC. Reporters Colin Dellis and Amen Odumakin spoke earlier last week and choir director Josiah Telsho and some students about the concert tonight. Are there any differences from this year and last year? Um, well, the biggest difference is that we didn't have an October concert last year, so we're super excited to be back and doing it. It's only been a month of school, so the students have been working really hard and making some really good sounds, so excited for Monday. How do you think you guys are going to do with the concert? I think we're going to do fine. We're like sounding good together, and like it's good to be back. I think we're going to do very swag. Um, yeah, I'm excited to actually be able to perform for people this time. How do you think the concert will go? It's great. Make sure you come tonight. It's at 7 o'clock. It's free, no charge. Come on and enjoy some really great music. Moving on to activity news, there are some new clubs being formed at SFHS. Emily Pip and I had the opportunity to interview some of the members of the new Dungeons & Dragons Club, which meets on Mondays and Thursdays right after school until 4.30 in Mike Bremer's room. Uh, this is Emily Pip and Jacob Renfro, and today we were checking out the d, &D Club. And we asked him what D&D &D is and how to play. Uh, why did you start the D&D &D club? I started the D&D &D club because we have a lot of research types of clubs, but we don't have a lot of like student-centered creative clubs that make them come up with their own things, how they want to bring it. Uh, how do you think it's going so far? I think it's going very well. Uh, everyone seems to join it, and we are gaining a lot of people. Uh, we started 12, and I think we're like 18, 20. Uh, how do you join? You join simply by coming to the room at, during one of the meets. Uh, what do you do at D&D Club? Well, basically, it's just it's basically just a bunch of friends getting together and playing a really complicated board game. Uh, what do you need to be a player? Honestly, you don't need anything to be a player because everybody there already has like tons of extra set of dice. You don't even need any knowledge. I'm basically brand new to the game and I'm having a great time. Uh, the people there helped me ma make my character, and yeah. Uh, how did you come up with your character? So I had my friend Renfro from lunch. I had him help me make my character, and he basically just walked me through and asked me what I wanted to do, and like some essential roles and stuff. So I was like, oh, a healer would be cool, because everybody needs a healer. It allows the... The, the students that are leading it are very passionate about what they're doing. They really enjoy it, and they're, they're excited to teach people how to, how to play the game and just like, invite everybody into, like, into a community and have a good time. Another new organization at SFHS is the Multicultural Student Union, which meets during Saints time on Fridays in the theater room. Reporters Tiffany Muthiaru and Kayla Gagner got some background on the group who are tackling some important issues in the school. This summer, um, we were working on a show called Mamma Mia uh, in our theater, and I had a number of students who, we just started talking about some of the issues that they'd been facing through their education, um, and their issues of being um, minority students in a majority kind of white school, and so, some of the things that they were feeling. And we thought, well, this would be a really great opportunity. Um, years ago, we had a multicultural club, I guess it was called a club. Um, and we 
myself and um, our counselor, um, Tammy Swarski, and um, Patty Waldvogel, who is a teacher in our school, also were having similar conversations as I was having these conversations with students. And we thought, well, one thing that we can do in our school would be to have a space where people can meet and talk about issues that might be really difficult actually to talk about and that a lot of people probably want to ignore or just brush under the rug. It entails basically trying to support each other and also give a voice that we can directly address issues that we're having. Like my dad is white and my mom is Chinese. So I know a lot of people have been um, trying to say stuff in Chinese, like use the language. And it kind of makes me feel off. I don't know. Um, yeah, it upsets me when people say rude stuff when they're not uh, about other people's culture and race. We thought that having a, a platform where um, our students of color and allies, people who are interested in different cultures, in learning about other people and the way uh, the world might work outside of um, their own kind of myopic vision of the world, um, how could we come together and have conversations and support each other um, in, in issues um, and, and look at some big issues um, that people have been facing and see if we couldn't advocate, support, and even solve some of the issues that um, students felt that they were grappling with. I think it's good to be exposed to other people's stories. That's kind of the whole reason why I wanted to be a part of this. Definitely N-word usage, just, oh, just, I feel like there's a lot of just non-black people at the school who just think it's okay just to say whatever they want just because nobody's gonna tell them off for it. That's like a, definitely a big thing that needs to be stopped. This summer we met quite a bit. Um, we met with our principal at the high school as well as our superintendent and um, we started laying the groundwork for it. I wanted to join because I had felt kind of lost. It was just being, or at least I felt like I was the only blanket at the school. I didn't really know anybody else besides Destiny and it just made me feel a lot more welcomed and accepted feel a lot more safe as well. Thanks for that information on new opportunities for our students at the high school. Hey Renfro, you know a person's wallpaper can say a lot about them. What's on yours? I have a D&D &D calendar on my wallpaper. I just have snowy mountains. I'm not really a customizer. Now this week's RQT is all about people's screensavers. What's your background? What's your wallpaper? Well, my wallpaper is... Uh... My girls, uh, Austin Avatni and Devin Warren. My favorite son, Josh. So my home screen is a picture of me when I was young in the Philippines, and it's me holding a firecracker here. And it was a family trip to the Philippines to go visit my grandma, so it was pretty fun. We went there for two weeks. It's the default one, and it looks cool. The depiction of Vietnam and its rural areas. I thought it looked quite neat, so I decided to put it as my background. Now let's kick it over to sports. Hey, 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 Saints. I'm Dalton Og. And I'm Cole Heckenlevel. And, and this, this is sports. sports. In national sports news, the NBA and NHL start preseason with both the Minnesota teams winning, the Wild winning 4-3 over the Blues in overtime, and the Timberwolves winning 117-114 to over the Pelicans. In addition, we have clarification from last week's broadcast from our national sports news segment. While the National Basketball Association has made a COVID vaccination requirement for its players, there is no such requirement for high school level athletes. The girls tennis team finished off their team season with a win against Monticello ending with 11 wins in total on the season. They lost team sections but will play individual sections this week. Last week, the girls soccer team won all three games staying undefeated with a record of 15 wins and zero losses, which is record setting for St. Francis girls soccer. The boys soccer team had a hard fought game on Thursday night against Providence Academy, but lost five to one. The volleyball team won last week on Tuesday against Denfield for their senior night. And on Thursday, they lost to Becker in five sets. During homecoming, senior Tyler Schwab caught an important game ceiling touchdown, making, his, making him this week's athlete of the week. Friday night, 
homecoming night. Stands are packed. Student section roaring with excitement. The ball snapped. You get the pass. You run down field. You score the touchdown. Homecoming night. That's what Tyler Schwab did. And how does he feel about it? Well, let's ask him. How has your season gone so far? Uh, I think it's gone pretty well. I have had a lot more success at home, actually. That's kind of funny. But I think overall, we've had a good season to this point, and I'm ready to get after it this next Friday. What was going through your mind when you caught the touchdown pass? Uh, so I came back to the ball, and I was like, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get this. And once I caught it, I'm like, I need a score here. I looked back a few times, but then after that, I was like, I got this. Do you plan on playing football after high school? Uh, I, I actually, this is kind of a, keep this on the low. There is one school that I am interested in right now, and we'll, we'll see if I go there. Not sure yet, though. Has football taught you any life lessons, and if so, what are they? They've taught me that I need to keep persevering because some there's there's so many highs and lows of this season, and sometimes you're good, sometimes you make all the catches, sometimes you don't make any, but you just gotta keep going. And that's our Athlete of the Week. Now let's kick it back to Cole and Dalton. Finally, the football team went to Sock Rapids on Friday to play the Storm. Unfortunately, the Saints did not come out on top after their hard-fought game. Now back to Milo and Jacob to wrap it up for this week. Before we go, the class and outdoor adventures went on the canoe trip at last Thursday. Abby Ferrario got some footage to lead us into the week. That's all we have for you. See you next week and stay safe. Stay safe.